what do I think of my own work at the end of this and my own stance on it? It probably is really hopelessly idealistic, oversimplified, arrogant. I don't know, I mean, I can only do what feels right for me, same as anybody else, and I guess that's what everybody's doing anyway. This is just my version of it, and what does matter to me is that whilst it is, there is a contradiction in attempting to make a piece of positive thinking communication around the nature of protest, around not protesting, at the same time as protesting. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. I know it doesn't make any sense. And I don't think that making sense is the aim. The aim for me is to highlight that maybe a paradigm shift is available and already happening. And maybe this is just me adding my drop of water to the wave. Yeah, that feels good. Yeah, and as Zizek states around China, it's important to dream of alternatives. And governmental attempts to not feed those dreams only reaffirm the possibilities of the power of considering alternatives. This series of videos proposes joining the dots, listening and looking for similarities on a democratic bottom line level. And whilst fairness is too subjective a term to use academically, it is fair to say that there is a critical mass evident where the level of perceived injustice has become untenable and action has been provoked. Through this flattening of the playing field where bottom line injustice has been flagged to such a high level, what occurs in parallel with this is just that differences are laid to rest or laid to one side for a short while whilst the bottom line agreement takes precedence. This phenomena has been named by this research project diverse similarity. Diverse similarity, or similar diversity, seems to be the phrase that's coming out of all of this work for me. All these people have got very different blends or brands of what they say and how they say it, but it does feel like there's a commonality amongst these messages, and that's the one that I want to pull out. Common sense wisdom, that feels like what we need on the planet. I'm not really expecting that anybody watching this isn't already on a similar song sheet to the way that I'm thinking. Yeah, I guess I'm a, a weirdy, hippie, new age, lefty, liberalist, utopian idealist, really. I guess that's what it comes down to, with a bit of punk rock thrown in there. Positioning myself within the speakers that I have in this video, I feel like I'm in the center. I know that Zizek's very left and the Occupy movement seems very left of centre. But maybe that whole paradigm needs a, a rethink or a rework or maybe it just needs dissolving and like Zizek says, you know, what kind of leaders do we want? What kind of system do we want to replace the one that doesn't work so well for everybody? That's a difficult question. I'm not claiming to have the answers here. I'm claiming to have some questions here though, and my question is why don't people join the dots between all these amazing thinkers on the planet? Why doesn't Zizek talk to Eckhart Tolle? You know, these, all these great thinkers, great speakers, don't seem to know about each other. So if I had one wish to come out of this project, it would be that Maybe some kind of conference was called, or maybe some kind of discussion table was created where some of these amazing thinkers could join the dots. Put your hand on your heart, Put your hand on your heart. and just ask yourself internally, and just ask yourself internally, what kind of world do I want to live in? What kind of world do I want to live in? And listen. And listen. Do it now. Do it now. So I'm placing myself in the middle of this project to look at who am I in relation to my beliefs and my actions and how they fit into 
the voices of people that I really listen to in my life. How do I make sense of that? How do I make sense of being me? How do I make sense, if making sense means anything, of being somebody who cares passionately about the world, who doesn't want to go on a protest? That doesn't make any sense. As I let go of understanding and step into trust, trust that my intention to shine a light is enough, enough for something bigger than the sum of its parts will emerge from this. And that thing will be a very useful thing that came out of nothing, nothing. I mean, look, the internet's full of nothing. There's no, nothing there. It's a virtual world. It's ones and zeros. So when nothing becomes something, then that's interesting. Yeah, like Zizek warns outside Wall Street, it's important that we don't fall in love with ourselves in the act of protesting. And uh, he relates to the carnival of protest and says that's the pitfall of taking a public stand, that we might look to define and find ourselves within the act of resistance, and that's missing the point, because the important bit is the day after, the week after, a year after, a century after. And yeah, this is also about media. My favourite media joke is media, media. It's all about media. Well, this is all about me, dear. And it's also media, and it's also not really anything to do with me. And whatever media is anymore is kind of up for grabs. It's a form of communication that involves ones and zeros that is very easy to throw out into the world, into the sea of shite that we call the internet, the World Wide Web, which is mostly full of rubbish, isn't it? and sometimes something floats to the top that is useful. It's not a sneezing panda, it's probably not going to go viral, it's probably not going to be watched 130 million times like a sneezing panda, but if it's watched a few hundred times and people do something with it or it's useful to somebody then I've fulfilled my purpose. Yeah, the surface aesthetic of resistance through either street protest or the virtual anonymous webcasts has never looked so good. It's all shot on HD cameras, even the general public now seem to know how to hold a camera still and frame shots reasonably well. So the divide between what was called user-generated content and professional reportage seems to have been massively reduced. And it's seductive in itself to be the subject of these exciting and worthy media missives, and it's in danger of missing the point. Yeah, it's interesting to note Zizek's red ink message is recorded by a participant and uploaded, unedited as a share. Looking round at the scene that Zizek's talking at any point, many others can be seen to do the same. So yeah, we live in post-postmodern times where the source or author of content has truly become undiscernible and arguably less and less important. And what matters now is it is there, shareable, mixable, usable, as this project has taken from many sources, remixed it and re-uploaded it. So this digital technological revolution is truly new. I think as Arab Spring and 15M and Occupy Anonymous have clearly shown, information can't be held by authority anymore. And if a critical mass of public opinion believes that the world needs to see or hear anything, the mechanisms for that are now not only in place, but unpoliceable and unstoppable. Anything can be instantly replicated and distributed in seconds. And so cutting information share at the source is no longer viable by authorities wishing to stem the flow. I like that. Yeah, Gangaji, stop looking for what you want. And what do I want? Peace, freedom, justice, fairness, a new positive world order. So... I'm going to follow her advice and the only possible conclusion to this piece for now is to throw it out into the world and let it go without attachment to outcome. 
and a very old phrase that I've been taught through some of my teachings, medicine teachings, a great way to end anything is uh, to say so mote it be and that means may it be like that I hope those wishes come true so peace, freedom, justice, fairness a new positive world order and an education system that is passionate forward-looking, insightful, contemporary, vibrant that's what I'd like to see and that's what it's all got to come back to anyway it's all about the education and my heart and mind are in the education system and will be probably till the day I die so that's my bit that's what I'm going to put in and uh, may this may this piece of communication do something useful in the world uh, yeah, the Buddhists say maybe we'll be happy and well. And yeah, why not? So mote it be. What kind of world do I want to live in? What?